Well, hello there, Bit Bashers. It's your pal Al here with another one of these retro things. Today, we're going to be having a look at the C64. But is it retro? We're going to find out. Firstly, I'll unbox it. Secondly, I'm going to show you how to set it up. And thirdly, I'll do a bit of a review. That's all coming up right now. So, as you can imagine, I was pretty chuffed when this thing turned up on my door. And uh, I've never actually had a Commodore 64. I've had a BBC Micro, a ZX Spectrum, and many other Micros, including the Apple II, but never a C64. And many people say they're actually the best of all of the microcomputers. Certainly, it was the biggest selling. Now, one thing I should point out is that you can buy this in the UK, the Nordics, Italy, Germany, France, Spain, Netherlands, Belgium, Australia, and even old New Zealand, which is where I am, but not in the United States or Canada yet. Uh, you can only get the predecessor, the C64 Mini. So under that advisement, let's just crack on in to the box. You can see in this box is not very much. I got it from Mighty Ape here in New Zealand. Let's get that packaging out of the way and have a look on the side of the box. Uh, you can connect it to a TV or monitor using HDMI. You can choose from various display options, including a CRT filter. More on that in a moment. Uh, unusual to a normal console. Obviously, you can save progress at any time. And you can also add your own games and programs with firmware on a USB stick. On the other side of the box you can see the included games and guess what they included 64 games. Yes I see what they did there. Some great games I've already played on other platforms uh, including Boulder Dash, California Games, Cybernoid 2, um, what else? Uh, there's so many great games. Impossible Mission, uh, Pit Stop 2, I love Pit Stop 2. There's so many great games, uh, California games as well. So I'm going to show you some of those games in a little minute or two. But uh, suffice it to say, there's some great games already built in and you can get to them really easily through the carousel. I'll show you that in a moment as well. So I guess there's nothing much else to do other than open up the box. You can see inside the Commodore 64, C64 itself, and also the box with all the other ablutions. Let's have a look at that keyboard first of all. So it sounds and looks like the real thing. You can even look at the original keycaps, uh, something which has not been seen much before. So the keyboard sounds good, it looks good, and it almost feels good. It's not quite what you'd expect from a real Commodore 64, but it isn't far off it. I'm not complaining. Having a look on the side of the unit, you can see that there are three USB ports as well as a soft power key. On the other side, on the back of it, there is the power input, which is a micro USB, as well as an HDMI port and a final fourth USB port. Underneath, there's the serial number 25395. Okay, on the right-hand side, we have the box with all the other bits and bobs inside it. You can find that joystick there as well as the power supplies and so forth. The buttons, uh, I'll come to those and how clicky they are in just a moment. But uh, having a look as well, we have the uh, USB cable, which is micro USB on one end and normal USB on the other for the power supply there. And then the HDMI cable, which is also supplied in the box. What I also appreciated was the inclusion of the C64 quick guide manual. There is a fuller guide available on the website, but this is pretty useful to get started out with. So definitely worth a, a read. You may remember the 1983 movie War Games if you're at ages with me and David Lightman went after the company Protovision in it. Well I just found this interesting that Protovision also make games now for the C64 and also the Commodore 64. Now on to that joystick. Is it clicky enough? Yes, is the answer. It's a full micro switch uh, joystick which has been included and it certainly does the business in all of the testing I've done so far very enjoyable joystick. So without further ado it's time to plug it all in and uh, press that little micro switch on the side. When it powers up you get this. Lovely. So there are a few little configuration things you need to do when you set up like your display and also to choose whether you use uh, the carousel or the classic mode. 
Now, if you choose the classic mode, the default will always be to boot up with the C64 basic. And if you choose the carousel mode, the default will be to open up with the carousel, which I'll show you in a moment. You can always change that through the device settings as well. In the display options, there are some interesting settings here. You can choose Pixel Perfect, which is a mode that gives the full display width with uh, square pixels for the C64 or Commodore 64, or pixels that are 2 to 1 ratio for the VIC-20 mode. There's a European 4 to 4 by 3 mode and a North American 4 by 3 mode. You can also see these items on the bottom for CRT. Well, allows you to uh, introduce a software, softer scan line effect, which uh, will make the games look like they were running on an old TV display. Anyway, I chose to boot the system into the classic mode, and uh, here it is. And uh, as you can see, it works and looks just like a normal Commodore 64. In fact, to the bystander, you probably couldn't tell the difference. By pressing the button on the left hand side you'll see this menu and you can choose uh, what to do with uh, media. For example if you've got a USB stick in uh, with disk images for the C64 you can get them to load from there as well as exit to the car carousel mode and this is the carousel mode with its um, lovely chip tune background and you can flip between the 64 games there's also a sorting method as well which allows you to choose whether you want to sort them alphabetically or by by title of course or by genre and so forth right so uh, selecting one of these games is as easy as um, pressing a button on the joystick once you've found the one you want of course it had to be epics California games for me now don't forget that this is not just about the 64 games that are built into this system the great thing about this is that we truly are able to present a computer which, unless you went on eBay or Trade Me or something like that and bought a retro machine, uh, you know, it could be $300, $400 worth of machine. You would need to buy a 1541 disk drive as well. Probably you might need to get one of those SD card converters to allow you to plug in an SD card with all of the, the trimmings of that. And then, of course, it wouldn't connect to an HD monitor or television set so all of these benefits are built into the system uh, and it's all brand new as well so new modern circuitry all of these advantages that you wouldn't get having a normal commodore 64 the beautiful thing is it looks like a commodore 64 and more importantly it plays like a commodore 64 it really is a great machine They've spent an awful lot of time making it all look and feel like the original Commodore 64. So for all intents and purposes, if you take this in front of people and showed them this, they would perhaps think that this was the real Commodore 64. It is still an emulator, underneath it all it still emulates the Commodore 64, but the speed difference and the overall result doesn't make that much of a difference at all. You can't really tell unless you're an absolute aficionado. So from me, it's top marks. Well, that's the review. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned. Again, I'll have some more videos in the near future. But until then, please subscribe and uh, comment. And if you like my videos, then please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.